Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Is it just me or does it seem like we always have to make them? And if you can hear the sound of my voice, you must be in the seats with once again. As always, my name is Dave Voigt. I am your venerable host for this podcast where we interview a wide variety of industry professionals and not only ask them about current projects, but pick their brain on what got them into the business and just the evolution of the art form, which is really what we like, love to talk about because we, we, we like talking movies. <laughs> It's kind of just what we do. But uh, as always, you can find us on either pod- uh, blah, 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 blah. Apple Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, or you can find everything archived on YouTube. And as always, please don't forget to follow us on um, all social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at In The Seats. And don't forget to visit us at intheseats.ca for all the latest and greatest festival coverage, movie reviews, news, and upcoming events that we have planned. Because we do lots of fun stuff over at In The Seats, and you should join us. But on today's episode, we are talking with one Daniel Perry, who is the head of digital over at Arrow Video, who just launched their new streaming service, this past month and for those of you who don't know arrow is a is a video label who who, uh they have a very unique curation they do a lot of horror they do a lot of genre but they do interesting stuff and the new service has launched and it's 4.99 i recommend you check it out but we got to talk to dan about curation we got to talk about just uh the importance of sort of being passionate about movies in in this day and age where there are so many options on what to watch and how to watch it that really we don't want to forget about the art of the filmmaking and the art of the movie which is really what is really the passion that got most of us uh hooked in the first place but i hope you enjoy Now, I mean, obviously, I guess just to start off, thank you for the time today. I appreciate it. And I mean, I guess my first question is because, like, I'll fully admit, I've always been a fan of Arrow, the label, especially when they moved over to North America and started releasing discs. Mm -hmm. But also at the same time, it's obviously smart business to that you've got to have a streaming option because, quite frankly, everybody has a streaming option these days. Can you walk me through sort of not just, uh, I guess, probably the initial decision to sort of you coming on board or if you were in a different position at Arrow, just to sort of say, okay, we've got to have, sort of have a digital presence, a streaming presence. I think the, the the key thing, I mean, I've been with the company for over about four years now. And, you know, when, when I joined, you know, I've I've always worked in this, in this space in digital distribution. I've done that for about 12 years now. And, uh, you know, I've, I've, been you know a part of that side of um the i guess the entertainment industry overall uh, changes and and the developments in that time and i think you know starting with arrow and and seeing you know that the incredible um you know reputation they had within kind of the the blu-ray space and the limited edition space you know the, the challenge really is you know that there's a lot of people that are you know, diehard physical buyers. And I think, you know, the, you know, it's always on to the next thing. It's always on new thing. It's this thing. It's, you know, uh, download your films now. Now it's subscribe here and now it's advertising. And, you know, I think that the biggest challenge the industry's had is, you know, it's not really educated or weighted for, you know, the general audiences to catch up on the developments of kind of technology and I think, so therefore, everything becomes, um, you know, a bit of a competition, you know, it becomes a competition between, you know, what does physical offer versus digital versus theatrical versus all these other areas. Mm. And, you know, my history of bigger companies like Disney when I was there was, you know, that that's like warring factions between departments, you know, the, 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 the kinds of media. So it's very similar to what, what you see within people who are very passionate about, you know, Blu-ray products. And I think it was all about really kind of turning it on its head. And I think this is a discussion we had across the company around, well, why does it have to be 
you know, one or the other? Why can't it be both? Why can't it be all? Why can't it be more? And that's that was the biggest change in how we do things at, at Arrow in comparison to, I think, a lot of other companies is, you know, it, it, if, if there are people who, who really hate <laughs> streaming services and digital, and, and, and I've heard every argument you can over the years, you know, and, and they just want to buy these incredible, like phenomenal top of the range, you know, physical products um, that, that we put out, that, that's absolutely fine. And, and at the same time, there are going to be people that don't really want to have Blu-ray discs and, and Blu-ray options. So you need to be able to, to offer something. And I think that the, the biggest challenge I think we've had in the last, you know, and we've, we've been in this market now, you know, in the UK for, for about three and a half years. So we're not kind of new to this space yeah. at all. But I think that the, the challenge really is how do you offer something that is, that, that doesn't, um, that continues that reputation, something of high quality, and kind of prestige in this kind of cult film space. Well, no, and I mean, I absolutely agree with you. And I mean, full disclosure, I mean, I am a physical media fan, but I think I'm an everything fan because there's something else I wanted to ask. Mm. Because, and this is something I've really found quite genius because obviously there's going to be movies that I want. Like, I mean, I went and I got Flash Gordon. I picked up the Sakamoto box or the, you know, <laughs> or the De Niro De Palma box and those kind of things. But then at the same time, I'll go into iTunes and I'll be like, I'll see something that I was a little hesitant on. And I'll be like, oh, that's only $2.99. Okay, click. You know, or then, oh, the streaming service. Oh, that's a good price. Click. Mm -hmm. Like, there is, there's been a very sort of competitive push to sort of I think, like you said, why can't it be, it doesn't have to be one or the other. Why can't it be all? Why can't it be more inclusive? And it really, at least from a consumer perspective, from my perspective, it felt a lot more sort of forward thinking to be able to get a lot of this stuff done and out there. And I mean, what was the impetus on your end to be able to go, you know what, if we make it all the right price, people are going to buy it once, twice, pay for the subscription service. Like what was the lead up to that? I think that the lead up to that really was about, um, you know, not being, you know, the, you've also got to keep in mind that the, the, the business as a whole, you know, the industry as a whole, you know, what we usually do when we, we take on a new media, when we, when we take on a new way of distributing films, you know, it's, it's how do we take all of the ways we did that thing previously and just copy it all over, but just in a different format. And, and you can't do that. You, you simply can't because there's, there's too many nuances and very specific ways of, of digital distribution, for example, like, you know, renting a film, buying a film, yeah. service. And I think that really was the, the, the part for us was, you know, we're not, you know, we, we, we're more than happy to, we, we've got our, you know, digital versions of our films. We've got, you know, ones that have like all of our extras together as well. But at the same time, you know, people when they're paying, um, you know, for our, our Blu-ray, you know, additions, you're paying for quality of that physical experience. For sure. So to be honest, I mean, whether, whether you look at it as a, as a pricing strategy or whether you just see it as, a, as, a, as an option of how you, you know, maintain your business is you've got to be able to give people the choice. And, and that's the key part that, you know, there was no, there's no real discussions internally of saying, well, you know, oh God, you know, d does this devalue the film or does this devalue the brand? It, it, that, that conversation is moot for us as a company because it, you're working in completely different mediums. And I think that the, the aim for, for, you know, you take the, the subscription service, $5 a month, and you know what you get within that is is just the ability to explore um, a, a really different kind of service and a, and a group of people, and that's that's the key part is a group of people being able to talk about film and 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 offer that. And I think so when you're looking at the different options of what you can do uh, within this space, what you can do is sometimes uh, people um, either. You know, maybe they've missed the, the window on that initial, you know, first release. Or, or do you know what? Maybe they don't know enough about that filmmaker or they don't know enough about that that series of films to to invest in in spending a certain amount of money on, on a Blu-ray. As of today, they're not gonna buy the next 10 arrow releases, but but do you know what? What they can do is they can come and test it out with us. 
they can come and go, do you know what? I am going to check out the, you know, uh, Malatesta's Carnival of Blood, or, you know, I am going to go and check out, you know, uh, this, this Japanese horror I've never heard of. And I think it gives people a kind of gateway into us. And, and I think that's a key part. And I think a lot of people, you know, for, for me in particular, the, the challenge has is, is never really been about how do we convince, you know, people who buy Blu-ray to come over and check us out. To me, it's more about how do I convince somebody who's coming into our subscription service or into our digital products to go, oh my God, I love this so much. I want to buy the limited edition Blu-ray and get all that great stuff that comes with it as well. And I think, again, it just goes back to that customer choice. It doesn't have to be this or this. It can be all of these ways. And it, and it all kind of connects up in a, you know, a pretty, pretty good kind of model overall. Well, and I mean, I love that you say that because I mean, so much of this industry has always been based around like, oh, well, this is replacing this. This is replacing this. Oh, this is dying. Oh, that format's dying. It's like the business is still doing pretty well. It's just a question of what people are spending their money on. There's so many more options now. And I mean, it really does speak to the sort of, I mean, and not just from a content standpoint, but just from an accessibility standpoint, how mm. consumers want to be able to sort of consume something the way they want to consume it. But, and, and that's, that is, and I, and I can tell you a hundred percent with experience that that is, that's one of the biggest, um, I guess, uh, faults that we've had is this place of fear and, and this place of, you know, it, it's got to be something new. And, and the, the, the biggest challenge we have for, for a company like us, you know, we, we're, we're an independent, small company, you know, in, in, reg in regards to, a, a shudder if you want to look at it from a similar perspective on on the subscription service or you know even if you want to go towards the disney's and the warners of this world you know those are all gigantic companies with with huge amounts of of, of investment and, and stakeholders and everything else and to be an independent company you know you've got to be you know to me you've got to be able to offer something in that space that that you know that defies what everyone else does. You know, we, we as an industry have been led, but for the last decade and a half um, as an industry, and then in turn, the, you know, customers and audiences around the world on the movements of these giants, of the movements of the Netflixes and, and the, the Disney's, et cetera, of this world. And I think that's been one of the biggest drawbacks on what we could do within this space. And, and that is, I think, key when you look at the, um, how these changes are, are affecting Asian. You said it's, you know, there's all of these different options and how you watch and time that you watch. And, you know, I think for us, it's, it's, um, it, it's approaching this very differently. It, it, it's approaching it not as some sort of just simple business opportunity, which, you know, think, yes, of course, of course, of course it's yeah. a business we kind of keep it working, but if your main goal, which is what, and I can tell you right now, this isn't some PR speak. I can tell you quite completely truthfully that every single person at our company is extremely passionate about what we do. You know, that, that we, we've got people where they're passionate about certain kinds of films. They're passionate about uh, certain ways of getting films out there. And they're passionate about how those, you know, Blu-rays look and how our services look. And, that's the, 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 the great thing of where we are now is we as a small company based in, you know, um, in the UK, we're allowed now due to the technologies that we allow and also of a, of a, a reputation that we've slowly built up over a decade um, for being, you know, just you know, a bunch of people that like films <laughs> and it's, yeah. it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's relatable in, in that sense that we can offer something like that. And I think if that to me has always been the key part is how do we continue to, to, um, to, to grow in this sense that's very organic and very kind of normal. I think that technology has now allowed us to expand in a way that um, we never would have been able to, you know, seven or eight years ago. And I think, that then suddenly changes the the conversation when it comes to how people watch and what they want to watch. You know, for the, if people um, if if we take you know one percent of of Netflix's subscribers just for one month to come and check us out, or if we have some people that we're going to buy you know 
a Disney Blu-ray and they were going to buy an Arrow Blu-ray, you know, that that's a, a really great part, but your model doesn't rely on that. Your model relies on being quality and being renowned and having a reputation that's trustworthy. And I mean, it really does speak to the fact that, especially with all these services coming back up, and I mean, given just sort of the nature, especially of new content these days, just how it really is being sort of almost barfed out into the system at random and there's just so much noise with something like this there really is sort of a cared sense of curation because i mean netflix was never going to put on the the herschel gordon lewis series you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> that's very true it, 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 do you know it, it's a fascinating no, i was going to say yeah so, sorry we, we, we're talking over each other no i mean it, that 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 is if there's one one key part that I wanted to do, or, or we wanted to do, I, I, I shouldn't say I at all, because this is absolutely, um, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be, you know, heading up the, um, you know, the Arrow service, but, you know, th there's some really incredible people that I get to work with to make this happen. But I think key part we wanted to do, and we've done this for years, when, we, when we're speaking to directors and, and I want to be really clear you know we we are we have great relationships with studios that we, we obviously we can re-release their films we have great release with sales agents when we buy new films but most importantly it's developing relationships with the people making these films yeah and the the, the way that we of always if you look at you know let's just take that example the HG Lewis films you know, you're talking about someone um, at our company, Ewan, who, who obviously worked on that release years ago, who that release is one of the most insane things I've ever seen. And it, it, it is, you know, and this is someone that, that, that is, you know, the digital guy, if you want to call it that. But I, I, I could not get my head around how cool that was. And I think when there's someone who's, who's paying that much attention to, to what you can offer, you know, that to me has always been the part that we want to develop with with these with filmmakers, with, you know, any kind of area of crew or cast that can work within this to make those extras and everything else. But I think when you look at the, the, at the, at the model, at the market and the industry, it's all about it's this short term approach of just and, and I'm going to use it in this conversation and I hate using it, but content. Yeah. That's the perception of what this is. It's content. And it's not. They're, they're films. You know what I mean? I don't want to get too, you know, too criterion about it. But, you know, it's, no, it's no, they're pieces of art. You know, they're, <laughs> they're, they're pieces of where, do you know what? The, the conversation's been with the filmmakers where they've just gone, could you just please not sell to Netflix? Because to them, what, you know, and, and again, it's the same with AVOD platforms. It's the same with a lot of these these people have gaps in their slate that fit an algorithm yeah. that, that fills a slot that does this. They don't care about your film with the most amount of respect to the, all of the people that work there. And they are some incredible people that work at that company. But the company itself in the presentation of that content, oh, I've said it again, in the presentation of that film is it, it, it's, it's not there. It's not a collaboration with the filmmaker. For us, when, when you look at what we've done in, in the US market, so we launched an Apple TV channels about a year ago in the US. Mm. And, and since then, what's been a real key aim for us is to use our brand and our existing kind of, um, again, reputation within the, uh, the market for bringing together some really great films that people know us for. We've been able to develop that with new release films. So if you take something like um, The Deeper You Dig, which we, we um, released on, on Arrow in, in October for Halloween, you know, that to us is, it's so important to frame that film in as best a way we possibly can within that, within that service. And that is, you know, we've got, there's, there's two, um, there's an interview with the fact, there's, there's like a 50 minute interview with the family that make that film. And it is absolutely the, the story of this filmmaking family who have done some incredible work, including The Deeper You Dig, which is just an amazing film, that, that, that gives me so much more understanding. Whether you've seen the film first or read this interview first, you've got context to how this film is enjoyed. And I think that slightly deeper exploration, and it doesn't have to be 
63 hours of extras for every film. But I think that framing of a film and a filmmaker or a genre or, you know, an area of, of the world in which this film was made, I think gives you better understanding of certain films. And I think that is severely lacking across the business right now, particularly in that digital space. How do you think those relationships that Arrow seemed very sort of key on and sort of built in company wise on building with directors sort of permeates out through the industry in terms of getting other you know, people to sort of, I guess, to maybe even sign up with Arrow or to license something through the service. Because, I mean, I've got to imagine it helps because, I mean, at the end of the day, while people, you know, will want to sell their movie to Netflix for money, at the, you know, for money, quote unquote, there will be people who will care more about getting the right audience for their movie and getting people to talk about the movie and maybe having opportunities come up from that as opposed to just getting shoved into, like you say, a, a slot inside an algorithm to get buried on a bigger service somewhere? Um, I, I think that it's already happening. You know, we, we, it started, I would say, about two years ago, where we started to kind of see, you know, particularly that change in it. And I think it, it's a shame because I say for kind of, you know, older films or, or, or films that we're re-releasing or, you know, um, uh, restoring, you know, a lot of the times, you know, you're, you're not necessarily dealing directly with filmmakers, you know, you're dealing with you know, sales agents and licensors and, and all of this. And obviously when that next step comes to, to work on that. But I would say when it comes to in particular, you know, there's been a, a, a massive shift in, in, in the approach that people have that I, I think as long as you, um, as long as you, I think, keep your authenticity you know as long as you're not um you know i'm sure this <laughs> this will come back to haunt me one day but but you know it's it's as long as you stick to you know the authenticity of what you're it, it, it kind of naturally finds its way and and i think you know over the years you know we've been you know it's been crazy you know the, the i always remember the, the um the day that uh Guillermo del toro called the office which is just you know, obviously a phone call you're just so used to. <laughs> and it's just this thing where everyone's around the office going, what? And it it, it it happens, you know, and I think, I don't want to say too much because obviously I don't want to necessarily ruin, um, you know, potential future surprises of, of films coming up. But, you know, this kind of thing is happening a lot more now. And you're finding that a lot of these these filmmakers and a lot of these people who are involved in, in films from you know the last you know 15 20 years and the new you know new release films we're we're very fortunate that our reputation precedes us in in a pretty positive way and i think that the only thing that will change and again we're, we're still you know we're still kind of starting out in this space when it comes to you know um you know a subscription service but i think when we can get to a point where you know financially it makes sense for these filmmakers you know we're we're pretty good, you know. It's not like we're we're shortchanging anybody, you know. We're but we're still very small. But I think you know you'd be surprised that you know one of the things that's changed quite drastically in this industry is what I think you would think is a is a cash cow with the likes of a Netflix or or a Prime Video or even a Hulu. But they're they're mo they've been moving further and further away from licensing content for a very long time, you know. To that unless you're willing to do a Netflix production, which is a which is great if you're a filmmaker and you get this ginormous <laughs> kind of bag of cash to kind of make a film and, and do these incredible things that you probably wouldn't be able to do otherwise. But then at the end of that journey, that film is locked in with that service globally on every format possibly for a very long time, which means that you may not get that Blu-ray release or you may not get that theatrical release. So. I think, you know, ideally, I think what we want to kind of try and get to a point is that, you know, we're able to offer, you know, some of those kind of, you know, potentially bigger filmmakers in the future, you know, a pretty decent alternative that, yeah, you know, financially, you know, that's that's not going to be uh, a major issue, you know, maybe a year or so from now. But I'd say even more so that we stick to our guns in how we approach this, that, you know, when we're talking, you know, go back to that comment on the algorithm. You know, I think the thing that we've always had as a bit of a mantra internally is, is you know, we're not, um, we, we, we have got analytics and data and all these, you know, incredible, wonderful things. But what's, what's the best thing about it is, is that you've got a bunch of humans looking at this thing and going, 
do you know what would be really cool? And that's the next stage. That that's that's the part that's missing is is this kind of data disconnect between these all of this information. You know, this age we currently live, social dilemmas, kind of world we live in. I think you'd be amazed at how much just a little bit human in the middle of all that would would make it so much more uh, better. You know, I think it's that's the thing right our our labor is our is not dead no worries i no worries i mean i guess just to put a bow on all this because i mean there's there's something else that kind of fascinates me just about this entire process because especially for a company like arrow i mean some of the movies that get released no matter be it blu-ray or streaming or what have you like some of the companies that hold the rights went out of business or the movies were made independently back in 1981 or or there's you know the negatives of the film were sitting in somebody's warehouse that nobody knew about. I'm kind of curious from your perspective, is there anything that has sort of come in the building for you that either A, you really had to sort of walk, maybe not the licensor, but sort of the, the filmmaker through the concept of digital, or also is there any kind of movie that you sort of were, were surprised actually came through the door? Uh, I think on the first point, I mean, yeah, it, I wouldn't say it happens a lot, but I think it, because we do things differently, I think, you know, just to take a, a great example of this is, you know, in November, we've got a, a film coming out called The El Duce Tapes, which is an um, incredible documentary, um, uh, which is, again, uh, following a, a very shocking individual from, you know, the early 90s, uh, late 80s, early 90s. And I think it's interesting because, within the service we obviously have to you know we're going to curate around that that film so we're going to try and find you know a, a theme or a topping and the, the you know the theme for november is ban this sick filth which is kind of this concept of, of of an idea of you know 80s moral panic outrage at film and and that's the theme for the for the month we can do a lot with that but i think at the same time when you, it's it's that's a complexity that, that you don't quite get within, you know, a Blu-ray world because you're just releasing the film. So you kind of have to bring the filmmaker on board with you to just make them sure, you know, make their sure that, uh, you know, you're, um, you're approaching it with the most amount of respect to their film. And I think we've seen this, you know, outside of, you know, the commercial part and, you know, the strategic approach that way. It's, it's, it's really interesting <clears throat> when you get to, uh, excuse me, it's really interesting when you get to, um, you know, see uh, the, the the options that that they probably weren't aware of, and I think this happens a lot around. You know, filmmakers in particular don't don't quite get an education fully on all of the different ways that you can distribute content digitally now, and I think it's a shame that you know sometimes people can run circles around them, but it, you know, for us, we can offer some really great positive alternatives that they're like, oh wow. And then when you see them engage and they go, so, you know, for example, you know, on our service, you know, we could get in touch with, you know, the, the a directors of a new film and say, hey, could you just record something at home, like a, a five minute intro to this film? And from the moment that message goes out to them filming that, to sending back, we could get that live on our service to, you know, tens of thousands of devices across the whole of North America within a few hours. Yeah. And I think when they suddenly engage that way, that changes everything because they suddenly go, huh, well, that's interesting. That could be a really, and, and I think that we were only just starting to do that right now, for sure. Um, I think on, on films wise, in regards to films coming in that, that you know, were, I, I guess, I mean, do you mean like surprising or, or one that I was, you're just really excited about? A little of both. I, I, I'd, I'd say the, the, the one um, that for me, I, I really like only by the fact that we, I guess, kind of, um, I guess, took not took the chance on it, but but moved ahead with this film. And, and it's a new release film we did earlier this year called Jesus Shows You the Way to the Highway, <laughs> um, which which is which is one of the most incredibly batshit insane films like I've, I've seen in years that I, I, I could not stop laughing and being blown away by the kind of filmmaking of this, of, you know, of what this was. And, and it's, 
I think to me, you know, oftentimes every few months when, we, you know, we're bringing in, there's, and as you could imagine, there's a lot of films that come in through, through us. There's wish lists of older films. There's all these kind of screeners and, and things that we need to see. But I think what's great is that when you, when you see a film where you go, oh my God, that's really good. And that, you, that can, that has, we have to have that title. Like we have to get it. Like, there's there's a few films that you know you know people across the company where it's they'll kind of fight for do you know what I mean like they'll yeah they'll go yeah you may not get this but you'll get it it's definitely a title for us and I think that's what's so cool you know, like we we don't have there's no formula for what an arrow video title is or an arrow title is it's just this thing that we we all kind of nod at each other going oh yeah no I totally get what you're doing it's it's kind of like it's a film that you couldn't quite see anyone else doing something with. And that's not a knock on that film. That's a knock on those other places not being able to do it. And for, for us, I think having something like Jesus shows you the way to the highway or having something like the deeper you dig, the range that we were able to offer, because we're cult films, you know, we're not, we have a lot of horror films, but we're not horror films. Yeah. You know, we, we were able to really showcase a very broad reach of content without it being too kind of diluted, which I think is a really cool thing to have. So I think that in particular is a, you know, a, a great film that I'm uh, very happy we managed to get. Well, I mean, and that's, and that's really sort of the magic of the service as well, because like you say, and I'm glad you said it because there is no discernible Arrow movie. There is no definition of what an Arrow movie is. An Arrow movie is a movie that people want to talk about. And that's sort of, the, that's the important thing that we need to sort of remember in this wash of, I'll say the dirty word again, content, but it's important <laughs> to remember sort of the films at, at, at the end of the day when it all comes down to it. It, it, it. If you can basically, if it's, if something's kind of indefinable, that to me is, is one of the, the, the key areas that you could get, uh, you know, a film with us, sure. you know, there's a certain, that there's films that come by our way, and and, and there, are, I mean, that there's um there's a film I really wish that we got, and I don't mind saying it, um, a Greener Grass, um, which is a film that came out um, last year. Yeah. And and it's it's just where, and, and do you know what, <laughs> I'm I'm do you know what? I'm not going to use that example because it would mean like I'm I'm being uh, detrimental to the people that did pick it up. But what you see is when a film goes somewhere else, you know, I I can tell you a hundred percent that the there are so many people at our company that are a hundred percent just gutted like that you don't get that a certain film and it's you're just like oh man and then and then you see the way it gets released and you're just like oh man we oh <laughs> that 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 to me is i i think being able to when you see a film that that just grabs you and you go, it's got to be that. Like you've got to go with that film and and roll with it because the, I think the other part, that slightly indefinable part that I really love about our, our brand and our label, that you know, it, it's it's not taking these things too seriously. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I think it's it's not it's not about you know, again, I love Criterion, I love Movie, you know, but but they take themselves very seriously. And I think that can be, you know, great for people that love film. And, and, and those guys are all doing phenomenal stuff. Like we work with them a lot still, you know, we, we work with them licensing content. For sure. So, yes. Sorry, I said it again. Um, <laughs> I'll put it uh, every time I say it. Um, but it's the fact for us was we want to have fun with this thing. But the idea of something that is, that is not taking itself as seriously as, as, people do and and you can see this in, in the way that you know uh, we, we've approached like the launch of the service you know there's stuff that we did in our lead up our pre-campaign which is just insane and and eventually people may go back and, and look at what we did but you know we're trying to do things so differently in in promoting the service and talking about the service and wh whatever else we do with it that I think that's the fun of it and I think it, that absolutely 100% should come through in what we're doing. And I think people in this wonderful, completely insane world that we're currently in right now, people kind of want that, I think, you know, want something that's a little bit more, you know, fun, a little less serious and, and being able to just, you know, enjoy things a bit more and, and not necessarily have to kind of spend 
four hours just scrolling through 63 services to find something to watch. I think what I can quite confidently say is if you come to the service and you come on Arrow and you, you're you just looking through all the different curation and seasons and shelves that we have, I can guarantee you if we tell you to watch it, you absolutely should watch it because it's it's going to be something really different. And that's the, that's the key part that I think is, is going to be the point of difference between us and, and many others. Well, and I, I 100% agree with you. And I think that's the best sales pitch I could have, you could have possibly given for the service and a good note to end on. But <laughs> thanks again for the time today, man. I really appreciated it. No problems at all. Thanks a lot. All right. Cheers.